Hey everyone, today we'll be going through exponential equations as a part of the two unit mathematics HSE year 12 course. Um, in this lesson I will be just going through some simple basic uh, questions related to this topic and we'll be trying to solve them. Okay, first off we've got e to the power of x to the power of 2 minus 4e to the power of x plus 3 equals 0. What, what's our first step going to be? Well, we can see that there's something common here. You've got the e here and you've got the e here. Well, why not make that something that we can... Why not make it our own? So let's let's sub in. For every e to the power of x we see here, we're going to sub in, suppose, u. So u equals e to the power of x. That's the first thing I'd write on my paper. Okay, perfect. So now what we'll do is that we'll rewrite the equation. So you have something approximately like um, u squared minus 4u plus 3 equals 0. Okay, now it says solve, so we quite haven't finished yet. And when you see this, what do you first recognize? Well, when I see this, I recognize that this is a quadratic. So I hope you do too. Perfect. We'll write our double bubble. Yeah. Put the u's there. Now let's have a little think about this. What equals 3 when you times two factors together and what equals negative 4 when you add two factors together? So I would say um, something like negative 3 times negative 1 equals 3 and negative 3 plus negative 1 equals negative 4. So I can just put that here. Perfect. And then I'd get something like u equals 3 or u equals 1. Now if you can remember, we made u e to the power of x, so we're going to need to sub that back in. So we have e to the power of x equals 3, or e to the power of x equals 1. Now just the key concept that I'm going to explain here is that suppose you had the square root of 4, right? And you wanted to get rid of the square root. If you squared it, then you would get rid of the square root and the squared, effectively only leaving 4. In the same situation over here, if we take log of e to the power of x and do that for the same do the same for the second side we can actually cancel this e and you'd get left with x equals log to the 3 this is exactly the same for the second part so we can take log of this and log of this cancel the e out and you'd get x equals log 1 Perfect. We've solved the first equation, and I'll leave the next two for yourself to solve. It's fairly easy, and using my method, it should be you should have no problems whatsoever. Great. Remember, practice makes perfect in math, so the more you practice, the better you're going to get. And don't feel depressed that you can't go good at math, and don't feel as if it's a very hard subject, because that's exactly how I felt and got me nowhere. But once you start working hard, it pays off. Okay, so let's solve question two. The first one, A, uh, requires you to use a quadratic equation, and I do not want to spend that much time, so I'm just going to go straight for B, and I'm sure you can solve A after I show you how to solve B, of course, with the addition of using the quadratic equation. Okay, so in B, it's asking us to find the x-coordinates of the point of intersection for the following pairs of graphs. Give answers correct to three decimal places. Okay, sure. Let's do this. Um, we've got two things, y equals 5e to the power of minus x, and y equals e to the power of x minus 4. Well, the first thing I realize is that they're both equal to y. Okay, so we can probably use simultaneous equations for this. Okay, let's write it out. So we've got y equals, it's always good to write it out, and we'll just try and figure it out, y equals negative x, y equals e to the power of x minus 4. Perfect. So let's make them equal each other, because that's how we're going to do it, because if they're both equal to y, they can obviously equal each other. So 5e negative x equals e to the power of x minus 4. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Well, if you if you have done calculus at school, you realize that if you have something like this, you can easily simplify it into something like this. If you're just very, very um, amazed that I just did that, then please take a look into indice rules and in calculus as well, where it's primarily used. 
Um, it's it's a very simple technique where if if you have something minus an indice where it's minus, you can just turn it into a fraction. And since it's technically it's it's this, right? So you can turn it into a fraction, and you can just put that as a positive here, like that. Perfect. And you've got e to the power of x minus four. Now that realignment is kind of really important, so you can visualize what I'm just about to do. What I can do now is I can multiply everything by e to the power of x to get rid of this. Okay, let's do that. Remember, our aim is to make this entire equation equal to zero. Okay. Perfect. Now, that cancels out, and then you get e to the power of x squared, and you get minus 4 e to the power of x. Perfect. So you end up with something like this. minus 4 e x. Now you can move the 5 over, so it becomes 0 equals e x squared minus 4 e x and minus 5. Because remember this is a plus here, Ch take it over to the other side and you get a minus. Perfect. Now once again this is a quadratic equation and we have to sub in every single e to the power of x as u. So we'll just put u is equal to e to the power of x, perfect, and then we'll just write it out again. So you have u squared minus 4u minus 5. Now, seeing this, you should be able to solve it, so let's draw a double bubble. Oh, well, factorize it, I mean, sorry. So u, u, perfect. Um, what multiplies to equal negative 5 and adds to equal negative 4? Well, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, and negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So, negative 5 and plus 1. And that you can just make that equal to 0. Perfect. Now we can find what u is. u is 5, or u is negative 1. Alright. Now, same technique as before, we're going to make the e x uh, e to the power of x come back and it's going to be e to the power of x equals 5 or e to the power of x equals negative 1 alright now we can use logs again in order to get rid of this e to the power of x and find our final solutions so we take a log of both sides and that same with this one and log okay so the log to the e cancels out in both, and you get left with x equals, f uh, uh, wait, one sec, sorry, log of 5, and x equals log of negative 1. Now, I hope you realize the main mistake here. You cannot actually take the log of a negative number. So this is wrong. So this cannot be our solution. So you can write partial solution. x equals log 5. And the main reason I keep it in log is because we always want exact values in math, and I'm sure that your marker will be fine with that. If not, you can always put it in three decimal places as the question asks, but I don't have a calculator near me, <laughs> to be honest. But anyways, uh, th that should be the solution after you put it into three decimal places. So, in three decimal places. Uh, you can just do that yourself. Okay, thanks for watching, and I really do hope this helped. It's just a short tutorial on helping you with exponential equations. It was fairly basic, and I am sure you will enjoy the more advanced exponential equations.